Adventures of Hurry Man. Lois and Jimmy have found themselves with a broken down car in a town that time seems to have forgotten. Well, dry gulch hotel. Guess this will have to do. I guess so. It's the only one in town. <laughs> At least the town's peaceful enough. Almost too peaceful. What'd you expect, Miss Lane? Desperado shooting up the place? <laughs> Yes, we have a genuine cowboy-type gunslinger in town, and he's terrorizing everybody, including the newcomers. I'm doing all right, but the bullets are bouncing off my corn. <laughs> it's very funny. Bullets stepping on his corn. What's funny? Nothing. It's very sad altogether. I don't think it's very funny either. What did you say, stranger? He goes by Gunner Flinch. He's taking an instant dislike to Jimmy and tells him, get out of town by sundown or I'm going to kill you. You can't do that to him. That's right, you can't. Next time, it's gonna be your head. That guy he was forcing to dance and the guy who laughed are his two henchmen. The guy playing Gunner, Myron Healy, was well known for playing bad guys like this. His looks and voice made him a natural, and he played similar parts in several westerns, dramas, you name it, he was there causing trouble for somebody. Another fine example of take what you have and make the most of it. He's taking a bit of a shine to Lois, but the admiration is decidedly not mutual. Still, since they seem to have been thrown back to 1880, may as well go native while they're here. Oh, Jim, that shot. For a minute, I... It must be Gunner practicing. I see why he took offense when Gunner called him a dude. No real dude would be caught dead in a get-up like that. The real question here is, why was the store carrying that outfit? And for the life of me, I feel like I'm looking at French Stewart and Third Rock from the Sun right now. The resemblance is almost eerie. The episode title says Gunner is a bully, and that's putting it mildly. Here you are, boys. Almost forgot. Payday. Oh, a raise, huh, boy? Mm -hmm. I'm feeling real generous. In fact, he's feeling so good, he feels like a poker game. With them. Using his cards. And they know what that means. They bet that all. Oh. Mm -hmm. Me too. And we go. Pick them up, read them, and wait, boys. Uh-oh. Uh, don't even bother to read them. Hate to tell you this, boys, but I got five bullets. Five little aces. As long as he waves that gun around, he can do whatever he wants. And even though he keeps stiffing them for pay, these two keep working for him. He may be an insecure bully, but at least he's a tad smarter than they are. Incidentally, remember the five aces bit. It'll come up later and not in any way you expect. Lois and Jimmy try to go get something to eat, but the only place in town is where Gunner and his lap dogs are. He tells Pedro to throw Jimmy out. Jimmy! Nah, man. What are you going to do with him? Well, you've got nothing to worry about, man. Leastwise, not yet. <laughs> Why don't you and me sort of talk this over? No. Talk to that. Jimmy has also had enough. Scoop to the tail on a donkey. I'm not sure why he kept fussing with Pedro instead of either getting away or going back inside to help Lois. Whatever the reason, he fiddled around too long. Gunner knows what to do with Jimmy. You can't do this. I demand a rid of habeas delectari. I don't you worry about that, dude. Don't you worry about a thing. You just be sure you're out of town by sundown. How can I get out of town by sundown if I'm locked in here? Well, that's your problem. While he's doing that, Lois is on the phone telling Clark what's happening. Clark doesn't seem to be taking it too seriously. I'm not joking. Our car broke down and we're stuck in a place called Dry Gulch. I know it sounds crazy, but there's a gunslinger in town who thinks he's Jesse James or somebody, and he's gunning for Jimmy. Tell him to go on a diet. He'll be harder to hit. This is no joking matter. Besides putting Jimmy in jail, this, this character's been making goo-goo eyes at me. He's been doing what? That's different. I'll be right out. <laughs>
guy has Jimmy in jail and he's going to kill him. Uh-huh. Anything important happening? He's been looking sideways at me. What? Oh, kill him! Oh, yes, he go, yes, he go, yes, he Whatever that is. Well, Jimmy, now you can get out of here. He says, I can't stay, but Clark Kent is on his way and should be here any minute. And don't tell anyone I was here. I'm just going to let that go by. When Clark arrives, Jimmy is in his room more or less lying low. Clark says, let's go have a look at this guy who's making the goo goo eyes at you. Oh, howdy, Mr. Kent. I've heard about you. Welcome to Dry Goats. I've heard about you, too, Gunner. In fact, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Can I buy you a soda? Well, well, uh, I got a better idea here, Mr. Kent. Uh, why don't we sit down and play a little poker just to be sociable? Clark declines. Gunner says, according to the Code of the West, if a man asks you to drink or gamble with him, you drink or gamble. Clark says, I'm glad to drink with you. You may recall I already offered to buy. Gunner says, when someone declines my offer, I lose my temper. Like this. You better do what he says, Clark, even if the cards are marked. Mark? There's not much I can do about that. Lois points out that at least one of his six shooters is a seven shooter, but it doesn't matter. They're both empty, so now's the time to deal with it. But, rather than a nice beatdown, Clark has a better idea. He'll play poker. Gunner is practically drooling over that wad of cash Clark was waving around. A cigarette, Mr. Kent? Oh, thank you. No, I don't smoke. Huh. Can I light yours? Well, sure. Uh, thanks. You're a real nice man, is Mr. Kent. Would you look at that? Pretend to drop a burned-out match on the cards and they burst into flame. That company should make their cards out of something a little less flammable. Gunner doesn't know what to do now that his cheat deck is gone. Clark gets a new deck from the cafe man and it's time to play. Clark will deal first. You know, I... Uh, I sort of got a feeling you might have played this game before. Nonsense. He has Gunner cut the deck and it's time for the real action. The bet is Clark's bundle of bills versus those two bags of gold Gunner took from his pals. It's a mighty fancy deal, Mr. Kent. Nothing? Showdown time. What do you have, boys? You beat five aces? Five. Well, ain't more than four in the whole blame pack. That is not what you said this morning when you had the five aces. Aren't you glad I told you to remember that bit? Gunner is backed into a corner. He has no choice but to declare Clark the winner. Here you are, sir. I hope that'll cover part of the damage. Thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. Uh -huh. Shall we, Lois? Gladly. Maybe Pedro and Sagebrush will learn to keep better company after this. It's easier on the budget. I don't think Gunner likes to lose. Uh, speaking of Gunner. Well, dude, how'd you get out of the Hooskow? The same way I got in, accidentally. Smart guy, huh? Let me tell you something, dude. Gunner, leave him alone. You killed him. Sagebrush drags Pedro up to Boot Hill to bury him. Gunner is the kind of fake cowboy who carves notches on his gun when he kills someone. He carves two now, one for Pedro and one for Jimmy. Too bad he didn't do some research into real Western gunfighters. He would have known that whole notch thing is a myth. Okay, Pedro. You can get up now. Uh, I am getting sick of this. You're sick. Gunner's killed me three times already. Gunner Flinch is also a myth. All those graves are empty. He shoots blanks at them to keep people scared of him. Our three out-of-towners decide to go up to Boot Hill and pay their respects to Pedro. While Lois and Jimmy are talking with Sagebrush, Clark notices something interesting. What are you looking at, Clark? He's looking at a dead man who's sitting on a rock sunning himself. But he can't tell her that, yet. He's going to take a walk and think. 
At least that's the story. Lois is used to him being weird, so she doesn't question. Uh, at last it's happened. I I've lost my mind, no? No, Pedro, you haven't lost your mind or your life either, apparently. Many times I hear of Superman, but I do not think I will ever meet him. Well, you've met him now. Neither Pedro nor Sagebrush really likes Gunner, and they'd like to stop all this nonsense. Superman says, here's how you do that. Well, did you figure out anything, Clark? Only there's going to be trouble in the streets around here pretty soon. So I suppose you're going up to your room and hide. Sometimes, Lois, discretion is the better part of valor. That covers his disappearance while Superman is around. Lois and Jimmy head over to the cafe. They really want to see this. I can't believe it, boss. Pedro can't be that stupid. Can't he? He's sure asking for it. So go give it to him. Even Pedro says, here I am, go ahead, get it over with. I just can't do it, Pedro. I, I can't bring myself to kill you. Why not? Already this year you killed me ten times. Yeah, but that, that, that wasn't for real. I can't really kill you, Pedro. You've been my buddy for too long. Besides, my gun's loaded with blanks and yours isn't. Superman. That's right, Gunner. I had a feeling your bark was worse than your bite. So I paid you a little visit this afternoon while you were taking your siesta. You paid me a visit? Yes, and you were snoring so peacefully I didn't have the heart to disturb you. So I just removed the slugs from your shells. So it was loaded with blanks. He just didn't know it. It's time to fess up all those graves, all the notches, all fake. He's never shot anybody in his life. Pedro says, neither have I, but I just might start now. Darn, Pedro, what's the idea of shooting my feet? I think maybe I'd like to see you dance, boss. First bath he's had in months. He and his pals will head for somewhere else. There's a good chance the town won't cry over it. Did this town have any law at all? They have a sheriff office complete with a jail and nobody running it, apparently. That made the whole thing a little unbelievable. But we aren't going for serious anymore. We're going for laughs. Witness Clark's indignation over some guy hitting on Lois, but not over some guy putting Jimmy in jail. Look at the stories we've had recently. A crazy cat lady gives Jimmy a million dollars, whereupon he tries to become an English baron, or whatever he was doing with that monocle. We've had a magic necklace that only gives invulnerability to those who already have it. And now we have a Johnny Ringo wannabe who talks big and shoots blanks. And it's just going to get sillier. Well, at least we know where we're going. And it's a fun ride, so why not? Thanks for watching, kids. And remember, clicking that like button is cool. Subscribing is even cooler. Leaving a comment is as cool as the coolest person you know. And becoming a patron makes you almost just like Superman. So don't hesitate. Do it today. Until next time.